Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas of Ayuba Communications and I am a streaming media producer. And today I want to talk to you about the Teradek Wave. For streaming media producers who need to make sure that their signal gets out to the internet, whether it be through ethernet line, cellular, bonded cellular, Wi-Fi, or any myriad of sources. You want to bond your signal across multiple sources to make sure your signal gets out there. There are a couple very reliable industry standard solutions out there. One of them is, I've reviewed this before, this is the Teradek Video Go. You can see it's got a modem on one side, a modem on the other side with nice big antennas out there to make sure the signal gets out. It'll connect to Wi-Fi, it's got an Ethernet a port on the back. This connects to Core, this can connect to ShareLink, and of course it can send directly to whatever your destination is via RTMP. This has been around for a couple years. The thing that this doesn't let you know is um, it's only got a, a video input. SDI in or HDMI in. It doesn't have a loop through to make sure that your signal is actually getting in here. The quality of your signal, you, you know, you kind of, it would be nice if you, if it had a monitor. Wouldn't it be nice if this had a monitor? Well, that's essentially what the Teradek Wave is. The Teradek Wave is basically a video device with a monitor and it's a really nice monitor. I've got this thing turned all the way down and it's a nice bright, basically it's a small HD monitor encased in this package. I've got it running on two NPF batteries on the back. You could do a one NPF battery, you can do USB-C, it'll run on multiple sources of power. You know, so if one battery goes dead, you just, it'll, you know, you can just keep changing them. If you have the USB-C plugged in, it'll run off the USB-C, it won't charge the batteries. Uh, and if that were to go dead, then you've got your battery backup right here. So that is, Reliability. That's really what we're talking about here is reliability. Um, I'm going to put this down here on the table and I am going to live switch this so that you can see this box uh, on top. You've got an SD card, so it'll record. You've got a USB port where you can plug in a USB modem. You have the two Wi Fi antennas. And what really happens is the Wi-Fi antennas are designed so that when you first set this up, you can um, administer it with an app. There's a Wave app, Android, iOS, and the Wave itself goes into access point mode. It is its own access point. You can connect to it and you can just start administering everything you need to administer. Okay, this is my settings, this is my destinations, da 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 but the nice thing is the Wave has its own monitor. So you don't necessarily need the app as much as you needed the app when you were dealing with this. Again, this had a tiny little front panel display or has a tiny front panel display and you can navigate with these little buttons, but the app is just way easier for just doing this because it's just tap, tap, tap. And you get all your settings at a glance. You can see all your different connections, make sure all of them are actually working and you're sending data across them. The app is just very, very useful for something like this where, you know, four lines of LED text is not enough. With the Wave, it is a great monitor. So again, let's look at this. Do, do, do. I'm gonna exit the new event. We're gonna come into the settings. See what I'm talking about here? This is essentially like it, as if you were going to administer your video go with a small iPad this is also your small iPad. So it, it, it essentially eliminates the need for that second piece. So right here in wireless, I have it set in client mode. So it's connected to the office Wi-Fi. You can set it back in access mode or you can disable the Wi-Fi. Uh, you can see all the different Wi-Fi connections that it sees. And apparently it sees more than I can see because these are some crazy, <laughs> it's a crazy number of Wi-Fi access points. And wait, 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 is there one? This, this one's not locked. It's probably a printer. But, um, and show tree. I wonder if that's like a US, if that's like a, a Christmas tree or something that somebody has up. Uh, you have my wired. Oh, let's plug that in. Actually, I have wired right here. So we will plug that in. And while we're here, we'll also plug in USB-C. There we go. And you can see it, it's connected. It's got an IP address. Boom, ready to go. Uh, along the bottom, just to continue, you've got your USB-C, Ethernet, USB connection, quarter 20 with uh, anti-twist mounts, 
HDMI in, audio in, line audio, headphone out, so you can monitor it. On the right side is quarter 20 with locking, quarter 20 with locking, and your power. And then on top, like I said, you've got a USB, your SD card for recording, and your um, Wi-Fi antennas. Modem. If you're going to plug in a modem, you can see modem one, modem two. Why is there two? Because there's one on top and there's one on the bottom. So you could have two modems connected to this in addition to the Wi-Fi, in addition to the Ethernet. There's no cellular, there's, there's no SIM card slot on this. There's no built-in, um, I'm going in the wrong direction. There's no built-in modem. You plug in whatever modem you want. Now, the fact that it has USB is not actually a downside because what that means is you could use a USB dongle to Ethernet and actually plug in the two different Ethernet connections. You could use any of the USB uh, modems that are out there. I only see 4G LTE modems. I don't see any 5G yet, but on the way. And you could also use a big hotspot as well coming via USB or Ethernet. So if you wanted to have Ethan, have this thing positioned outside the building, come in via Ethernet, Ethernet into the wave as a second connection. And I've done this. I've placed the modem far away from my device itself outside a production truck because the production truck's made of metal. And you're going to get better reception outside the truck than you are going to get inside the truck. That's just a fact of life. And using Ethernet with a dongle like this plugged into the USB port on the Wave is going to give you a better use case than just plugging the, this into the device itself inside the production truck. So that's why there's two modems. You can change your settings for each of those modems. Streaming destinations, I have it hooked up with my ShareLink account. Again, I apologize, some of this stuff is uh, super bright. I have, like I said, I have the monitor, I have the display, turned down pretty low, um, but it's still going to be too bright for the camera. Otherwise, um, I'd have to make everything else super, super dark and you wouldn't actually see the device. I have it set up with my ShareLink account, which we'll work on later. Down here, you have the about, tells you uh, what it is, display settings, your firmware, it'll automatically check when it's connected to the internet, or you can turn that off and then check for updates manually so that it's not trying to update uh, on its own. And of course, the time, you can set it for whatever time zone you are in. Now, another key thing about the wireless mode is you can set this up very similar to the Video Go. The video units from Teradek have this really cool functionality in that when you run the app on your cell phone, you can connect your cell phone to this device and the cell phone will share the data that it has access to to this device over Wi-Fi. And you can have more than one, more than two, more than three. You can have several phones sharing the data to the video go. And the key thing is it does this through the app. So you're not using the hotspot mode, which some carriers and some plans may not allow you to do a hotspot mode or may only allow a limited amount of data or a limited speed through hotspot. But it's like if you're using the app on the device, you're allowed to use all the data as much as you want, unlimited, they say. Well, the, vi the video app allows you to do that and the Wave app allows you to do that with the Wave is to share the data to the app and then the app hands it off to the device. And you can do that with multiple phones, sharing the data with the device. So that if you're not connecting to a local area Wi-Fi, you put this thing in access point mode, you have three phones connected to it in addition to two modems, in addition to ethernet, you get the point. There's a lot of redundant connectivity capable with the Wave and the video units. And that is what you get put together on the back end with ShareLink and um, Core. I'm going to exit out of that. Now, I have not created any events. We're going to create a new event. Uh, you can come up here. Nice keyboard with a numeric row right there. So if you want to create my uh, test two, the two is right there. You don't have to like change it between anything. And you have a choice of all these cool pictures. I don't know why, but you know, that's if you're going to do hockey and basketball, it really it's sports centric. So if you're doing business, 
it would be really nice if I could upload logos for my clients. This is one client, this is a second client, this is a third client, this is a fourth client, and just have them by logos. Or have a logo for a show that I do regularly, or something like that. That would be more useful to me than a mountainscape, uh, a winter lodge with next to a lake, a downtown city street. But, uh, well, whatever, we'll go with hockey. And then we say next, it's setting up my event. It's gonna go here. Next, recording, I don't have a card in here, so it's disabled. Let me add a card and we will go through the settings. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> do, do, do. It's enabled, select a drive. We're gonna select this, even though it's mostly full. Recording name, test two. MKV, mm, how about MP4, auto record, is enabled so when i start the stream it'll automatically record i don't have to do two different things next uh video resolution auto it's going to be the same thing there's only one encoder in the wave so whatever you're streaming is what you are encoding for the record video bitrate five megabits frame rate uh is going to be 30. audio input hdmi yeah, audio is going to come with the HDMI audio bitrate 128. That's fine. Do, 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 do. And now we're here. I don't have anything plugged into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up a camera. Now you can see I've got uh, Panasonic here, video out coming right into the bottom over here. And you can see I'm taking a picture of this screwdriver, which is right here. And now that we have these connected, you can see a row of icons across the top and I'll go through and explain each one. Power, obviously we've got power coming in, that's green. Bonding, which means I have more than one connection. You'll see I have wired and wireless, the Wi-Fi to the local area and my ethernet connection on the bottom. So it's gonna list them out. Uh, I have my cloud. I'm going to my test two account. This is the data rate, resolution auto, five megabits a second, audio bit rate. Right here, you, I'm just literally tapping on these very lightly. Audio input is HDMI or analog. I can change my audio level so I can bring it down like this. I can increase it like that. So if it's a little quiet coming in. So you kind of have a little audio mixer at this last stage, which is super convenient. I can't tell you how many times I'm working an event and I'm just asked to stream. We're gonna do it and we're gonna stream it. But then, you know, one microphone is a little bit lower than the other one. And it's like, I gotta add an audio mixer just to make sure that the levels going out to the stream are more even. You can kind of hear it in the room. You can make up the difference in the room, but I can see that the audio levels coming out of the mixer, which is handled by somebody else at the hotel, are much lower. And it's just easier to have that like right in the device. Oh, let me just inch it up a little bit. Okay, and let me inch it back down. So I've got that. I've got a headphone output so I can monitor the audio right here on the device with the headphone out. I've got my record. I'm actually not going to, you know, if you tap it, it'll start recording. And it's recording to the SD card. And then here's my stream. I'm going to stop recording. And the stream, if you click over here, there's a little, what they call a hamburger icon. I'm going to click on this and you can look at my stream quality. It'll show you my wireless, my wired, and there's my video data rate. Uh, obviously there's not a whole lot going on right now. So it's just bouncing around five and you can see that the two different connections I have are managing all the data. And that's how that's connected. Uh, if you click over here to my channels, it's gonna go to my YouTube channel and my Facebook channel. This is all connected through ShareLink. ShareLink is the other end. When, be, when, when devices say they do bonding, there's always two halves to bonding. The starting half is the device that's doing the bonding, splitting the data up across multiple connections. Then those things need to be reassembled on the other end because the, device, the packets going by cellular are not gonna be as fast as the packets going by ethernet landline. The ping is gonna be a little bit longer. They're gonna be behind. So on the receiving end, something has to get these packets and they're numbered and they're interleaved and it puts them in the proper order and rebuilds the stream that you had sent because all the packets come at different times and oh okay this one goes here okay that one goes there and puts them all in order and then sends that stream out to the destinations that you've preset like i've preset uh youtube and facebook it sends them out to the destinations that you've preset in the cloud and ShareLink allows you to just hey i'm going to connect to this boom boom 
ready to go. Manage your ShareLink channels from your ShareLink dashboard at sharelink.tv. I'm going to close that. And then we're going to say stream. You can see it's starting. It's making that connection. It's already recording. So like I says, this is automatically toggling the record automatically. And now my stream is going out. So I've got two different indicators for two different pieces. And that lets me know that I am sending this out to both of those and I can check the health of that right here. So it's just very nice to have all of these metrics, all of these ways to confirm. I can see the quality of my signal. This is what's actually going into the encoder. And this is the encoder and the bonding device. I can see what the settings are. I can see the bonding bit rates for each of the devices that are connected. I can click on the power, it says battery one's connected, battery two is connected, and it's plugged in. I can click on the audio, I can change my audio level if I want. I've got recording indicator with time, I've got a stream indicator with time, and then if I come over here, I can still adjust my brightness, check my status, and close that out. This device is making sure that you have the reliability of more than one connection. It's doing the bonding but it's doing it in a much more user convenient fashion with the touchscreen. I can see what the quality of my signal is going into the actual encoder. Whereas with a device like this, I have to use the app, which is gonna give me a preview of what it is, but I have to use two different pieces and I have to connect this thing. And it's just easier to use the Wave, which has the monitor and it's a bright daylight viewable monitor. If I had this on top of my camera outside and I had to stream using my cell phone and a Wi-Fi connection to the building, I could do that. I could get that stream out so that somebody else could see what my camera is filming, either as I'm recording, to provide notes, to ask questions from a remote location, because remote work is a standard these days. And if you don't have the ability to take what you are doing locally and feed it into the cloud so that someone else can view it and provide real-time feedback, you might be missing out on work. So you can see that that's what I'm doing here and it's doing it in this compact package, you know, not as compact with these big batteries on the back, but if you don't need the big batteries and you're not worried about having a power backup, then having a recording in here, streaming in here with a USB power here on the bottom, then you are really ready to go. My name is Anthony Barocas. I am a streaming media producer, and this has been my look at the new Teradek Wave, a beautiful monitor and bonding encoder in one from Teradek. Thanks for watching.